attach themselves to other things will grow uncontrollably and will result in one big tangled mess. Pruning is needed to keep the vines in order. And the paradox is that the, uh, the vine grower or the gardener, as, as is referred to in our, in our passage this morning, the vine grower must cut away the lifeless, unproductive branches and prune those branches that are productive. So at some point, every branch, every branch needs to be cut. Young vines are not allowed to produce fruit for the first few years, which means that a drastic pruning is needed each season so that the dead branches are gone and are not consuming energy that could be better used elsewhere and that those young branches have time to develop to their fullest and bear good fruit. So the aim of the vine grower, the aim of the gardener in our passage, who is God, is a fruitful yield, much fruit. Cleansing and pruning are the work of God and the words of Jesus. They determine which branches are cut off and removed and which are pruned. The mystery of these actions, cleansing and pruning, is that the plant looks useless and dead. Yet the branch's connection to the vine ensures new life and new growth. That firm foundation rooted in the true vine that is Jesus Christ. And that leads us to a final thing from our text this morning. And that is that as branches in the true vine, we must remain in Christ. The notion of remaining carries a a range of meaning. Abiding, uh, staying in place, enduring, holding out, and they all imply the steadfast and reliability of God's presence in and for God's people. Remain or abide is used 11 times in John 15, 67 other occasions in the rest of John's gospel and in his epistles. Basically, the sense of Jesus' words in verse 4, remain in me and I in you, most likely is this, remain in me and see that I remain in you. Or live in such a manner that you are at home in me and that I am at home in you. Now, inherent in that concept is that we are in a long-term, close, growing relationship with Jesus, and he is looking at the overall direction of our lives. We're inviting him to move into our lives and to live there as the permanent Lord of all we are and do. Paul says in Ephesians 3, 17, and the words are on the screen, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And as he lives there, we allow him to carry out his work of cleansing us, of making us pure, free from blemishes or shame. So as long as the branches remain connected to the vine, they live and they produce full leaves and they produce abundant fruit as they are pruned. But apart from dependence on him, we, can bear, we can't bear good fruit that lasts. As John says in verse 5, apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. So Jesus takes this common everyday um, image, that of a vine, and he transforms it into a symbol for us, a symbol of community and of mission and of love. And he invites us to ask some important questions. And they're on the screen as well. And they are, in what ways am I, or as we think about the life of our church, in what ways is my community connected to or disconnected from the true vine? In what ways am I, or is my community, fruitful or not? In what ways am I, or is my community, remaining, abiding in Christ, rooted in Him, in that firm foundation? And what fruit do I, what fruit does this community 
produce. Friends, as we wrap up, let, let's just remember this essential truth. No matter how hard we try, we cannot bear the fruit of God's Spirit through our own efforts. It's only as we grow closer to Him, it's only as we abide, it's only as we're rooted in Him, it's only as we're connected to Jesus, the true vine, learning to follow Him more closely that we become like Him. So today, let's commit to cultivating a deeper relationship with Christ, remaining connected to Him as, as branches do to the vine. Let's allow His life to flow through us, transforming us from within. And as we seek to be the healthiest church that we can be. May our lives be marked by the fruit of the Spirit drawing others to the life-giving presence of Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your life-giving presence. Help us to abide in you daily that we might bear much fruit for your glory. May your spirit empower us to love and serve others with the same love that you have shown us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now just in a moment of reflection, there's a, a beautiful little song that was um, produced uh, through our Salvation Army music department. Um, and it's, uh, it's called We Are, um, we are the Church. Um, uh, normally our keyboard player, Victoria, who is, uh, they're in Newfoundland, right? Are they in Newfoundland? Uh, would play and add her vocals um, to the worship team. Uh, she gets to today through this song. She's uh, on the team that recorded this, uh, Neon, our uh, territorial worship team. And so keyboards and uh, background vocals are our very own um, Victoria Evans. But the words will be on the screen as well uh, as, as they sing it. And, and just, just follow through. Um, and just be reminded of what it means to be his church. As we give consideration over the coming weeks to what it means to be a healthy and vibrant, strong and growing church, um, this song, We Are the Church, reminds us um, about the core of that message of who we are and who we are in Christ. So just for a moment of reflection, uh, I invite you to just listen and, uh, and, and reflect on the words that you'll see on the screen.
fixed on you but make this the start of a life lived to change the world let the glory go to you it starts in my heart when the walls come tumbling down that's our prayer, that we would be his church. Not our church. The church that we want it to be because, you know, we think we've got all the ideas, but his church, his spirit at work in us so that we can reflect his glory, so that we can be about his work. I love the first line of that song, no longer strangers we are known. He knows who we are. And then the song goes to talk about how when we have ourselves rooted and, and, and connected uh, in God as a foundation, his spirit will enliven us to be exactly who he needs us to be. To be exactly who he needs us to be. So as our eyes are focused on him, he'll use us. He'll use us to change our little part of the world uh, as we remain connected to him. I'm going to invite you to stand as we uh, close out our service. And we're going to sing um, another hymn. It's uh, uh, Blessed and Glorious King. It's song 574. Um, there's a typo in your, uh, in your bulletin there. It's... Um, 574, though, is the song. The words are on the screen. And, and I love the third verse because of the connection to everything that we've been thinking about this morning. Uh, Grant to thy people all thy grace for every call in this their day. This is the day that God wants to use us. That heart and life may be in joyful harmony, united, Lord, with thee. Life, truth, and way. That all who we are and all of what we do would be joined with him. So that he would be the one, uh, when our eyes are focused on him, he'd be calling the shots. He would be the one uh, who we turn to for direction and vision. And he is the one who gives us the power uh, by his spirit um, to, as the last line says, to live all flames of fire for him. Would you uh, join me as we sing uh, all four verses of this song straight through in closing?
And now to the one who abides in us as we abide in him, to the one who loves us as with a tender mercy that keeps us, to the one who prunes us that we may grow exponentially to this gracious and loving Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom all things can be accomplished and through whom the prayers of all people in all stations of life are answered. To him we give thanks and praise always and forever. Amen.